Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt from the Wichita Mountains in Oklahoma. Today is Monday, February 28th, 2022. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get right into it today. You've, you've all heard the news. Russia declaring war against Ukraine, uh, invading Ukraine, uh, hundreds of people dying. Um, they need our prayers. They definitely need our prayers, uh, praying for peace, praying for, <sighs> you know what? We need to pray for God's will to be done. Even Jesus recognized this in the Garden of Gethsemane. He, he was asking God to remove this cup from him, you know, basically asking God, is there another way for this to happen without me having to go to the cross? Jesus said, but even so, not my way, not my will, but thy will be done, Lord. <clears throat> you may have heard Putin threatens to bring nukes into this, threatening to deploy tactical nuclear weapons for the third time this month. Now, there are a lot of people saying, wait, this kind of conforms to a lot of the aspects of the Gog-Magog war. Described by the prophets. Um, you know, in Zechariah 14, verse 12, it says this, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. All the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouths. One of my favorite movies of all times is Raiders of the Lost Ark. And toward the end of the movie, you probably remember the scene, those, a couple of guys, their, their faces just kind of start melting, melting away, while they were still standing on their feet. I think it'll be very similar to that. Um, the only thing we know of, other than the power of God, to cause that to happen would be a nuclear bomb. Kind of happens when one goes off, your flesh consumes away while you're still standing. Hmm. You know, Russia, I believe, is mentioned in the Bible, Daniel 7, 5, right after Daniel 7, 4, which mentions America. And it's not a coincidence that 7, 4 is the birth date of America, July 4th. Um... But the bear was told to arise and devour much flesh. And Daniel was told these four kingdoms, these four beasts, would be kingdoms on the earth prior to the return of Christ. There's no coincidences with God, okay? There's no coincidences. So, again, let me just reiterate something here. Don't focus on the fear. Don't focus on the chaos. There's a reason God's Word tells us all the things that have to happen prior to His return. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilence, love of many growing cold, many people being offended, hating you for the name of Jesus, the gospel being preached into all the world. There's a reason we're told all these things. First and foremost is so we will know that He alone is God when all these things come to pass. But also, we kind of have something to go by here. We see the things that have to happen. You know, I'm pretty sure the disciples that saw Jesus on the cross thought that was it. That was, it's the end. It's over. What can we do now? But it had to happen. Jesus had to die on the cross in order for us to have everlasting life. In order for us to be cleansed of our sins. It had to happen. There's a lot of people who don't realize this when they pray against things that God's word has already told us will happen. You know, if it's written in scripture, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, I want to reiterate, keep your focus on Jesus. Maybe up your prayer time. Meditate on the word. Pray for peace. But understand that God's will is going to come to pass. Out of World Israel News, Lapid says Israel will vote to condemn Russia 
at UN. You know, just last week, Russia said, oh, the Golan Heights doesn't belong to Israel. It's not theirs. They have no right to it. Now, Israel is going to be on the right side of history and condemn Russia at the UN General Assembly. I'm convinced Russia will be with Iran leading that world army against Israel exactly the way Ezekiel 38 and 39 speaks of. I know I've been talking about Ezekiel 38 and 39 so much in the past couple of years, but I see it's about to play out. It's about to happen exactly the way God told us it would. And I, I still tend to think that Israel will have to act alone against Iran and try to stop their nuclear intentions. Israel will most likely strike Iran's nuclear facilities. Actually, I read a report a couple years ago that Israel had some 217 targets picked out. And Israel now has the ability to refuel mid-flight. They've got some bunker buster bombs to try to take out Fordo, you know, Iran's underground nuclear facility. And then I think when Israel takes out Iran's nuclear facilities, Iran will get the sympathy of the world, be like, look what Israel did to us. Russia will be like, let's go get them. And then you can read straight from Scripture exactly what's going to happen. Hmm. It's coming. It's coming. Out of World Israel News, Putin desperately trying to assassinate Zelensky. Russian killers are roaming Kiev. I saw where uh, Zelensky's wife said, Putin's trying to kill me too. 400 assassins roaming the streets in Ukraine, trying to kill the president. Can you imagine that? Hmm. Wow. Here's a headline out of Breitbart. Mufti of the Chechen Republic says Ukraine invaders are on the path of Allah. He's saying Russia is on the path of Allah. Now, I know there's a lot of people who are like, well, Allah is just the name of God in their language. But it's deeper than that. If you read what they believe about Allah, you'll know that's not God. They say Allah has no son, no heirs. It's blasphemy to say that God has a son. Um, my God sent his son to give us everlasting life. Clearly, their Allah is not the God I serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who sent his son Jesus to die a horrible death on the cross in my place so that I can live forever with him in heaven. So, I've said this many times, but Muhammad thought he was talking to the angel Gabriel in that damp, dark cave. It wasn't the angel Gabriel, it was the devil himself, disguised himself as an angel of light. Bible tells us that Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. Paul even warns us, hey, if we or an angel from heaven come to you with any other gospel other than this one we taught you about Jesus, may they be forever accursed. There's a reason Jesus said, if you do not know the only begotten Son of God, you are condemned already. Condemned already. So to say that Allah has no son, I'm sorry, but... That was the devil in that damp, dark cave. And guess what? The devil has many sons. So they're basically telling me Russia's on the side of the devil. Hmm. Okay. Well, but they will fulfill God's will. Understand something. The devil can do nothing unless God allows it. Look at, look at Job in the Bible. I mean... The book of Job opens with, you know, God and the devil having a conversation. Hey, have you considered my servant Job? Well, you give him everything, of course he praises you. Take everything away and he'll curse you. Well, do with him what you will, but spare his life. And then the devil does his best 
and Job still praises God. But God allowed it. How about this headline out of the Jerusalem Post? Can Israel become Europe's gas supplier? Whoa, you don't realize how huge that is. Um, Russia supplies the gas to most of Europe. And if Russia can no longer supply the gas, what do you suppose will happen? I'm seeing where in America there's restaurants and cafes and bars and hotels and liquor stores that are pulling everything off the shelf from Russia. They're saying, yeah, we're not selling anything Russian. I'm seeing where people, countries all over the world are condemning Russia's movements, um, sanctions against their banks, all kinds of things. And this headline says, can Israel become Europe's gas supplier? Whoa. I think that's huge. I think this could happen. You know, Israel didn't even have gas or oil until just a few years ago. And they discovered some of the richest reserves on the planet. Are you tracking with me here? In Ezekiel 38, um, the Lord says, He will turn thee back, in Ezekiel 38, 4, and put hooks into thy jaws, and bring you forth. I will bring you forth in all thine army. Could this be the hook in the jaw? Israel supplying gas to Europe? How long do you think it would take for Putin to get mad enough over that to go after Israel? Just curious. Just curious. Again, let me just reiterate. God's word will come to pass. And everything that has been prophesied in scripture will happen. Out of the Gateway Pundit, Trump calls on Republicans to launch select committee to investigate Hunter Biden and the Biden family corruption. I would love to see that. And you know what? Don't stop there. How about we investigate Hillary Clinton and Barack Hussein Obama? Let's investigate them the same way they investigated President Trump. And Trump came out clean. They couldn't find anything on him. Let's let these others go through the same process, see how they come out. Maybe throw Nancy Pelosi in there too. Let's check them out. You know, they want to check out a, a billionaire um, businessman's tax records who became president. How about we start investigating some of these public servants that became billionaires? How about let's check into that? Just curious. Um, we need to be waiting, praying, trusting. In Isaiah 55, verse 8, it tells us, God is telling us, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. My ways are not like your ways. My ways are so far and above you, you can't possibly understand. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 9. You know, when Jesus made his way to the home of Jairus, you know, there was a crowd following after them. And then, you know, kind of out of nowhere, this woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And I mean, it didn't seem like that big a deal, but that's when Jesus stopped. He said, who touched my robe? Who touched my garments? Uh, Mark 5, verse 30. I mean, Jairus could have said, oh, wait a minute, he's with me. I mean... His 12-year-old daughter was sick, and he had tried everything he could to, to get her well, but then he heard Jesus was nearby. And now, we don't know if Jairus was actually a believer in Jesus at that time. He was a, a spiritual Jewish leader, but he believed that Jesus had the power to heal. So he approached Christ, and he made this amazing statement in Mark 5, 23. He said, you know, my daughter's dying. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Now, that's a lot of faith. He thought, if Jesus can touch her, I know she will be healed. So when Jesus stopped, all of a sudden, he wanted to know who touched him. You know, Jairus didn't criticize him. He didn't say anything. Maybe it was because 
he knew that Jesus always had time for people that were hurting. I mean, I'm sure he'd heard the story of how Jesus had healed the demon-possessed man whose life was transformed. He probably heard of the story of how they, they lowered that paralyzed man through the roof, uh, an opening in the roof, and Jesus touched him and forgave his sins. Maybe maybe this was a test for Jairus. And if it was, then I'm, I think Jairus probably passed because it took a lot of faith to know that Jesus could heal his daughter. You know, sometimes God doesn't move the way we want him to or as quickly as we want him to. But God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. My thoughts and ways are so far above you, you can't possibly comprehend. His timing is usually different than ours. That's why we need to remember that when God delays answering prayers, it doesn't mean he's denying our prayer, saying no to it. Sometimes it's just in his timing instead of our timing. Keep that in mind next time you're praying for something that doesn't seem to happen. Um, seems to me that God answers prayers all the time. And I've kind of noticed he seems to have three answers for the most part. Yes, no, and not right now. <laughs> so keep looking to God. You know, Joseph, Joseph was a man of faith. When you read about Joseph in Matthew 1, verse 24, then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord bid him, and took unto him his wife. You know, we we read so much about Mary. Uh, so many people, in fact, there's a group of people on the earth that actually pray to Mary, which God's word forbids. Not sure why they still do that, but um, I think Joseph was quite a man of faith also. I mean, verse 18 tells us Mary was found with child, so seems to me the the pregnancy was observed by Joseph but not explained to him by Mary and this was after Mary had been away visiting Elizabeth for 3 months Luke 1 verse 56 3 months I mean I'm sure Joseph probably had the same thoughts that you and I would have had your wife's gone for 3 months and she comes back and she's visibly pregnant you're like wait a minute what have you been doing I mean, how could she expect him to believe this was a virgin birth? I mean, I, I find it incredible that he didn't divorce her, you know? I mean, he, it talks about it. He, he was seeking to put her away privately, but then the angel of the Lord appeared to him. And I, I just feel like Joseph wasn't given enough props for what he did. You know, that took a lot. How many men would have believed this incredible story, even if an angel had told him in a dream? I mean, it took more faith on Joseph's part than it did Mary's. But then that's usually the way it is, right? Those who hear from God or, or have a vision of God is secondhand have to exhibit an even greater faith in the person who received the word or heard directly from the Lord. You know, scriptures don't mention whether or not Mary ever tried to convince Joseph. I mean, what would have been the use? Only God could make someone believe a story like that, right? I think it's to Mary's credit that she trusted God and to Joseph's credit that he believed God. So we need to make sure we do as God tells us and trust God to take care of the rest. Um... Because God has really high standards. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You know, if you think about it, it seems that here in America, our society tends to reject this exclusiveness in any way, shape, or form. And I'm sure a lot of this came from the Civil Rights Movement, which rightly rejected the notion of, you know, whites only at certain establishments and, and men only where women should also be included. But if you're honest, you have to say 
there are times when exclusiveness is a very good thing. I mean, if you're having surgery, you probably want someone who's been to medical school, right? That's a pretty small group, medical school graduates. Or if you're having someone watch your kids, you wouldn't just go pick a stranger off the street, right? You know, when the stakes are high, our standards need to be high also. There's people that are complaining that, you know, oh, they need to build a wall. And, you know, it's like, oh, don't build a wall. Let everyone in. Wait, wait, let everyone in? That's how countries get destroyed. Let me remind you, heaven, God's perfect kingdom, has a wall around it, all four sides. And there's extreme vetting to get in. You will not get in unless your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the only way to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, and King right now, right here on earth. So we're made in God's image. If we want to put up a wall around our kingdom, we're doing just like God. So people shouldn't complain if we want to have a wall. Just saying. Um, when Jesus said this, he made a very exclusive statement. Now this makes a lot of people mad who want to be inclusive, saying, well, Jesus isn't fair. He's very fair. He's telling you exactly how to get into heaven. That he is the only way. Why do people get mad about that instead of being so thankful and joyful, saying, thank you, God, for telling us the way? I don't get it. I don't get it. Jesus' holiness is the standard for eternal life. He's the only way you're going to get to heaven. It's through him. We need to have this spiritual joy. Focusing on Jesus is the key to joy, even during times of chaos. As you read in Philippians 1, you can, you can see this. Um, in verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. There's so many great things there in Philippians 1. Um, this was written while Paul was in prison, but he was rejoicing over and over. Um, have you ever felt like you lost your joy? I mean, there's several things that can cause that to happen. It, it's probably the wrong focus. You know, maybe focusing on your bank account or your job or, or your anything but Christ. Paul was centered on Jesus. He was able to praise God despite being in prison. Um, or maybe disobedience. Sin steals our joy because it, it, it comes between us and God and our fellowship. Psalm 66 verse 18 tells us. So as we receive his forgiveness and obey him, then the joy returns. Or maybe it's a regret. You know, we, we can crowd out the gladness when we dwell on past mistakes, but God has forgiven us. 1 John 1 9 tells us when we confess, um, he wants us to choose to live in his grace and, and move ahead. Or maybe fear. You know, joy and fear can't exist together. We're called to live by faith, asking God to meet today's needs and trusting him with our future. Or maybe it's other people's suffering that has caused you to lose your joy. This can happen daily when you see what's going on in the news. How can we rejoice when others are hurting? Romans 12, 15 says we're to weep with them. But we're to also offer the hope of God's presence, God's power, and God's provision in those times. A consistently downcast spirit is a poor witness for hope, Psalm 42, 11 tells us. So keep your focus on Christ. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and let his joy become your joy. And then it can overflow to all those around you, no matter what's happening in the world. I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow.